Hey viewers, uh, back to work on this Peugeot bike here. This is a vintage uh, Peugeot. I believe it's a U08 or some similar model to that. Uh, made in France uh, between 1970, 74. Uh, you may have seen this. I've done a previous video on that. And I've also posted pictures of this on my Facebook page. Uh, RJ the Bike Guy, you can go over there like that page and see stuff over there. Uh, anyway, what I'm gonna do today is overhaul the headset. Um, the shift cables are already cut, you know, because I plan on replacing these. And then the brake cables are also cut. Uh, you may need to uh, release the shift cables uh, and or brake cables in order to uh, remove the uh, stem here, just because they'll, they'll be kind of holding that down. But that's already been done on this. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, remove the uh, front wheel, just kind of get this out of the way here. So just drop that down. Then I'm going to remove the stem from the uh, fork tube here by uh, removing this, uh, well, actually just loosening this uh, bolt here. And then I should be able to, let's see, looks like the wedge is kind of stuck in there. Pat, pat that down. Get this there, there. So like just the wedge was stuck in there. So that, that's out now. Then uh, you want to remove this little uh, lock nut up here. On this particular one, uh, this lock nut is like stripped out so it doesn't screw on real tight. Um, so you would use just a wrench to go ahead and remove this. And I'm going to be fixing this in another video, so uh, don't worry about that at this point. Then, there's a little uh, hanger for the brake cable. Pull that off. And then, there's a keyed lock washer. So it's got the like the little key here that goes into the, the little slot in the fork tube there. And it's got the, these little holes in there. And the little holes line up with this little pin here. Okay, for this next part, you want to be careful. Um, I want to hold the fork up, and I can really remove this uh, part here. This uh, cone is because there's loose bearings in this lower cup down here, and if I just remove this, the fork will drop, and those bearings are going to fall all over the place. And I prefer that not happen. So just unscrew this, and then there's a uh, some caged bearings around here, but I'll pull those out a bit. And then I'm going to use just like a little uh, Tupperware container or a box or something, and just be prepared in case those fall out. And they're not falling out. Sometimes they'll they'll fall all out there, and they'll go all over the place, and you don't want particularly want that. So. I can go ahead and just pull these bearings out of there. They're just kind of in this cup down here, like that. And then here's the cage bearings from the top there. Okay, here's all the uh, the parts from the inside here. Um, I'm gonna use some solvent, uh, probably like some mineral spirits. Like you, you could probably also use some uh, citrus de degreaser. I'm gonna clean the, the crown race and then the uh, stereo tube. And I'm going to replace these loose bearings in there. And I'm going to clean up this, these cage bearings here. Uh, I'm going to see if I can replace these. If not, then I'll just clean them up and put them back in. Then I also want to clean these cups here. So I have a rag with a little bit of mineral spirits on there. And then I'm just going to clean these races out. All the old grease and dirt out of there. Like here. And then down here as well. And then you want to check the various races and cups uh, and cones for uh, any damage, any cracks, uh, any what's called brindling, where you see little bumps in there. And uh, so these all look pretty good. You want to check inside the cups here. And if any of the parts look like they're damaged, uh, you may want to try to replace them. And unfortunately, I don't like a vintage. Uh, Peugeot like this you might have a little bit of difficulty finding the parts so you have to kind of 
you know, if they if you find them, they may be expensive. Um, so you have to weigh, you know, using the damaged parts uh, against the cost of the parts. But it is what it is. I went to the local bike shop and they were able to match the uh, cage bearings that came out of the top. And so I got some new ones of those. And here's one of the bearings that came out of the bottom, one of the loose bearings. And so I've got a gauge here that measures uh, the bearings. And this goes, falls right through there at the uh, 5 seconds inch. So that's the size of the bearing that were on the bottom. And I counted 24 of them. So I have some brand new bearings uh, to replace the ones on the bottom. Okay, I've got the frame flipped upside down, so this is actually the bottom cup, and I'm going to use uh, some grease here. i got some good quality marine grease, and I'm going to fill the cup here with uh, grease, and so it will hold the, the bearings in place, like that. I just run that around a little bit. Now using some tweezers, I've got the 5 32nd inch bearings and I'm just going to place 24 bearings around the race. At least I'm pretty sure that's, that's how many I pulled out of there. So I don't know if I lost any somewhere along the line, but uh, I'll see how 24 looks in there. If you, if you don't know how many bearings go in there, you should have almost a complete circle around there, minus uh, maybe one or two, three bearings, uh, small gap around in there. If in doubt, um, you know, if you, go with whatever was originally in there. If you don't know, then leave maybe about a two bearing gap in there. Okay, so there's 24 bearings in there. There's still a slight gap right there of maybe about two bearings, which is what I expected. So anyway, that looks like about the right account. If you if you pull like more out of yours, then go with whatever that is. But uh, I'm gonna go with uh, 24 in there. I flipped the bike right side up now. The, the uh, grease is holding the bearings in on the bottom side. And so now I'm gonna fill this cup here with some grease. And then I've got the the uh, the new cage bearings. What I want to do is just squirt a little bit of grease in between each of the bearings in the cage there. Just try to get it kind of packed in there a little bit. And then I'm going to set these bearings in here. I'm going to put the uh, the flat side of the cage here down because um, that way because the cone is going to come down on this side and so it's going to fit to the inside there so if I do this the cone will be rubbing against the the uh, flat part of the cage there so on this kind of bearing just kind of put this down in there like that and then I've got the fork here and I'm gonna put just a, a, a light coating of grease just around in here uh, I probably don't need grease down here because there's grease down in the bearings down there, but put just a, a light coating of grease down the round in here, and that will just help protect the metal from corrosion and getting up around on the threads there. That'll help everything kind of uh, screw on a little bit smoother because you don't want to like leave the metal bare there. Now carefully insert the uh, fork from the bottom. Be careful not to knock any of those uh, bearings out of place there. And it should fit right up in there like this. And you can test it, make sure it turns smoothly like this. And then I've got the uh, little uh, part that came off the top there. So I'm going to screw this on until it tightens against these uh, cage bearings here. And I want it to turn smoothly without any play. And I can actually back this off just a, a touch here, like this. And you just kind of get it to where it turns nice and smoothly without any play. And then you've got this little uh, keyed lock washer here. This little key is gonna fit in this little slot in the back of the fork like this. So when you finally get this, Kind of adjusted to where you you want it 
where it's turning smoothly but uh, not uh, too loose, then this little key is just to fit back in there. It's going to fit down over here. And then the, the little pin here on the top of this little part here is going to fit into that whole little hole. And then this little lock washer will keep this thing from turning and coming loose or tightening so much. So that actually feels pretty good there. Now I can put the cable hanger on there and this is also keyed. So that's going to fit like right in there. And then this also works as a spacer. And then I've got this little uh, lock nut here, which should screw on. But like I said, this one is, is uh, stripped out a little bit. So I'm going to be uh, working on uh, fixing that in a future video, hopefully. And so this would tighten on like this. It's almost, if, uh, if I take this part off here, then I can actually get it to uh, tighten on there like this. But I, I kind of need this. I could possibly replace uh, the cable hanger with one that clamps onto the stem. But uh, I'm not going to do that right now. But fit this in there. And this, like I said, this would just tighten it on there. And it doesn't need to be cranked on there. It just needs to be enough that this stuff on here doesn't come off there. Now I just reinstall the handlebars here and tighten the little uh, bolt here. And I'm not going to clamp it down real tight yet because I'm going to probably need to uh, straighten it for the front wheel. Well, I got the front wheel uh, re remounted. Uh, I still need to uh, reattach the, the shift cables and the brake cables and everything like that. I need to replace these shifters. But I'm going to do that separately. Um, but other than this uh, lock nut that's kind of stripped out, everything's uh, working nice and fine. Uh, nice and smoothly here. Anyway, that's how you overhaul the headset on a vintage Peugeot road bike like this. I hope you found that useful or interesting. If you did, please click like on the video. I always appreciate getting likes on my videos. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button and you'll see new videos as they come out. And I'm also over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page, and I post a lot of stuff over there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.